Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, March the 29th, 2022. It is currently 9.41 a.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Abilene, Texas, And no, I'm not coming to you from the upstairs room where I typically broadcast live here from Abilene, Texas. I'm actually downstairs in my study. Now, the setup is not the most conducive for a good podcast because I'm standing, right? Um, I have no, I have no place for like uh, books or anything. So anything that I need, I have to hold in my hand. The, The computer is way over here behind me. So like if I if I if I need the computer I have to literally turn away from the microphone, turn away and then turn back. So things are not going to 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 move as smoothly as they typically do and I know some of you are laughing you're saying it never goes smoothly. I understand that, but that's the beauty of a live broadcast versus a well-polished edited broadcast. Now, some of you would prefer the polished edited but I like the more real organic. So here we are. It is Tuesday morning. I was getting ready to say Tuesday afternoon. The reason I don't even know what time it is, is I have been away. Well, let's see. If you, if you, were, if you happen to be awake earlier this morning between around 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., you know that I was live on the air doing, well, test, trying to ensure that we've removed, we've fixed all of our connection problems. But We think we have. That's one of the reasons I'm broadcasting this morning. But here's what I want to do. I I, since I I, one on one hand, I need to test. I didn't want to just turn on the microphone and talk for 30 minutes. Going so, what are you doing today? Well, you know, for breakfast this morning, I ate this, and for lunch, I'm going to have this. And oh, by the way, uh, the winds blow. Yeah, just just sitting there talking about nothing. I wanted to ensure that I use this time to hopefully benefit you, benefit me, benefit all of us by talking a little bit about a subject that I think is neglected over and over and over again in probably your church and in most churches. There's always exceptions. But I think if you were to take a thousand people who go to church on a regular, consistent basis and say, when was the last time that in your church you heard some some in-depth teaching on things related to church history. I mean, in-depth teaching to things related to church history. Not, not, Not just a passing reference, you know, where you quote someone and you say, well, that person lived in the 1400s, or you just, you make a passing reference to an event. But I'm like, serious, in-depth teaching. When was the last time you heard serious, in-depth teaching on the seven ecumenical councils? Do you know everything that happened in those councils? Do you know what, what happened? What were the decrees? What were the anathemas? Do you know that? I mean, I could go on and on and on and, and ask questions in, re, in regards to church history. And I think the average Christian who goes to the average church is going to say, I know very little about church history. I know very little about church history. And sadly, many Christians don't care that they go to a church that doesn't teach church history. In fact, that's probably not even like on their list of looking for a good church. Make sure they teach church history. For most people, that's not even on their list because they don't think it's significant. They don't think it's important. But I cannot stress this enough. You can't understand the present of what's going on in Christianity in the present without understanding the past. You can't be protected from the past errors in the present without understanding the past. And I don't think we really move forward into the future without a firm grasp of the past. We need to know what has happened in the past in church history. It helps us identify past heresies that are still present today. It it, it helps us identify horrible mistakes that were done in the past so that we can avoid them in the present and in the future. But I think over and over and over, church history is just, it's just neglected and, well, it leads to a lot of interesting things. So early this morning, if I say late last night, I apologize. Early this morning, I just, I think I just finished the last test I'm like, okay, I've got to, fi- I've got to finally go to bed at some point. So I finally get everything together. I grab my, grab my iPad. I'm like, okay, what, what am I going to listen to? 
because I always have to listen to something when I go to bed. I can't, I can't go to bed in silence. My brain is always moving at a million miles per second. So I got to find something to listen to. And I ended up clicking on Redeemer Broadcasting. And I would highly recommend anyone listening to Redeemer Broadcasting. But at around 2.30 a.m., 3 a.m., somewhere around that time period, they played Our Daily Bread, which is a devotional, which uh, you probably, you may have seen the printed version of Our Daily Bread. It's the audio version of Our Daily Bread. You can subscribe to it as a podcast. Um, but um, they, they played an episode from Our Daily Bread, which is basically like a five-minute devotional, even at that, maybe three minutes, a little audio devotional. And I, I don't always agree maybe necessarily with how they handle the text or maybe every doctrine or theology, but I always love it because whenever it comes on, it at least p- puts in front of me scripture and some kind of spiritual thought that I can take and maybe I can work on and expand it into something bigger. It gives me something to meditate on. It's just a little bit of spiritual food. This is what I heard. At around 2.30, 2.45 a.m., listen because you're going to hear something from church history, right? When you hear it, I want you to, I'm going to, I'm going to pause it as soon as they say it. I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions in regards to it. It would be interesting to know what people know or don't know. So are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to mute the mic and then I have to, it's going to be a slight delay, but you'll see. Well, it's not going to flow as it typically does, but here we go. Hi, friends, and welcome to today's encouragement from Our Daily Bread. Our reading was written by Monica LaRose, and she titled it, Past the Boundaries of Knowing. It was a hard day when my husband found out that, like so many others, he too would soon be furloughed from employment as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We believed that God would meet our basic needs, but... The uncertainty of how that would happen was still terrifying. As I processed my jumbled emotions, I found myself revisiting a favorite poem by 16th century reformer John of the Cross. Stop right here. So so because of her circumstances, she found herself revisiting a favorite poem by 16th century reformer John the Cross. Now, just to show you that she doesn't offer any more information, I'm going to hit play again. Entitled, I Went In, I Knew Not Where. The poem depicts the wonder to be found in a journey of surrender. All right, she doesn't offer any more background on John the Cross. So if you're listening 2.30 in the morning, 3 in the morning, I mean, they, they broadcast the the uh, Our Daily Bread devotional on radio on Christian radio stations all around the world. It has a podcast with who knows how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions, subscribers. So all kinds of people are listening to this. And it airs on, on your normal evangelical Christian radio station. So the average Christian, they hear John the Cross, 16th century reformer. What do you think comes to their mind? What do you think comes to mind? What, kind, what comes to your mind? John the Cross, the reformer. There's a high probability anyone who has just a, a small knowledge of church history who isn't Catholic, who is Protestant, or if they don't want to use the word Protestant, they're not a Catholic, may immediately, oh, here, here's, here's one of the reformers. You had Luther, you had Calvin. Okay, he's one of the reformers moving the church away from Roman Catholicism. They would have heard John the Cross, the reformer, 16th century reformer. And I guarantee you, that's what many people would have done. In fact, I may have to test it. I may have to go on ch- at, at church on Sunday before we go live streaming. Maybe we'll do it even a part of the live stream on Sunday. I may have everyone in my church. I'm going to make sure that whichever service I have the most people, I'm going to say, hey, all right, grab a piece of paper. All right, John the Cross, 16th century reformer. What do you think? Uh, what do you think he did? What do you think he was about? Like, give me some basic information about them. And I bet you many would connect him with the Protestant Reformation. And they would be, well, right and wrong. He is connected to the Protestant Reformation, but not, but he wasn't on the Protestant Reformer's side. He was on the opposite side. He wasn't on Team Luther. He wasn't on Team 
Protestant. He was on team Catholicism. And it's just so, like, to me, that's so misleading that that she doesn't really explain who John the Cross is. She just calls him a reformer. Now, you could call him a reformer, but you would have to use a different terminology. Let me just give you a, some basic information about John the Cross, all right? John the Cross, um, he was born, I believe, June uh, 1542, you know, uh, yeah, tw- uh, June twenty fourth, fifteen forty two. I, I, I wrote down June, but I didn't write down the uh, the actual day. But it is twenty four June fifteen forty two, if I'm correct. June twenty fourth, fifteen forty two is when he was born. He died fourteen December fifteen ninety one. So he was born on June the twenty fourth, fifteen forty two. He died on December the fourteenth, fifteen ninety one. Born fifteen forty two, died fifteen ninety one. Born 24 June, died 14 December, all right? He is venerated as Saint John of the Cross. Are you getting getting some clues here? He's venerated as Saint John of the Cross. He was a Spanish, are you ready for this? Catholic priest, mystic. He was a Catholic priest, mystic. He is a major figure of, drum roll please, the Counter-Reformation. So he was a reformer, but he was a part of the Counter-Reformation. Now, if you don't know anything about the Counter-Reformation, let me give you just a little information, all right? The Counter-Reformation, sometimes referred to as the Catholic Reformation, sometimes it's referred to as a the Catholic Revival, was a period of Catholic resurgence that was initiated in response to the Protestant Reformation, also known as the Protestant Revolution. And where did the Counter-Reformation begin? Come on, class. Where did the Counter-Reformation begin? Now, if I was standing in front of my congregation, there are some people who, they, they, they should know the answer here. I almost want to wait. I don't know if anyone's currently listening to us live. I almost want to wait to see if someone goes into the chat and can tell me, when did the Counter-Reformation begin? Where did it begin? When did it begin? Well, the Counter-Reformation began in 1545. 1545. At the Council of Trent. All right, so it starts in 1545. All right, that's, that's very important. Now, he, John the Cross, is born in 1542. So he's a, he's a young child when the Counter-Reformation begins. But the Counter-Reformation goes from 5, or 1545 all the way to 1563. And it largely ended with the conclusion of the European Wars of Religion in 1648. So in reality, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't technically end all the way till 1648, but it's a long period of time. It's the Counter-Reformation. The, the Protestant Reformation occurs, and now the Catholic Church is forced to respond to the Protestant Reformation. And the Council of Trent is very much the Catholic Church's response to the Protestant Reformation. So John the Cross, he was a reformer. They just they just leave out that again, you could hear that, and many people are like, oh, he, he's one of the Protestant reformers. No, he's one of the counter reformers. All right. So he was a major figure in the Counter Reformation in Spain and is one of the 37 doctors of the church. And John the Cross is well known for his writings. Now, there's so much more we could say about John the Cross, but they mentioned, or she did in her devotional, that during her great time of, of there was confusion and, and difficulty. Her husband had been fur- furloughed from his job. It was a time of confusion, maybe doubt, a little worry, maybe a little anxiety, a little fear. What she turned to was a poem written by John the Cross, and it's called, I Went In I knew not where. I went in, I knew not where. I'm going to read a little bit of this to you, just so you can be familiar with it. I would definitely ask you to look it up. For those in the Discord channel, I will post this in the Discord channel. Let me see here. I'm going to post the poem right here in the Discord channel right now. I'm posting it right now in the Discord channel so that anybody can see it. All right. Now, I'm going to read just a little bit here. 
a little bit here. And again, it's just interesting that in her great time of, uh, now again, this is our daily bread, an evangelical Protestant devotional, right? On all Christian radio stations all around the country. So in her time of, of distress and confusion, she turned to a Catholic mystic. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with reading it, but I think if you're going to tell people that you read it, because again, you know what? I don't know about you, but you know what I would do? Uh, to even even way but when I was first saved, I would I would immediately wrote down St. John the Cross, wrote down the name of the poem, and, and tried to look it up. Well, back then, I wouldn't be able to look it up. But later on, I, you know, with the internet, there's people who are going to look it up. And they may not have any clue who St. John the Cross is. In fact, on the website where I found it, I don't think it gives me any background information on who St. John the Cross is. So I would have, my my initial response, if you don't know anything about church history, oh, this is one of the reformers. You, you see, that this just, sometimes when we don't define and make distinctions, we can lead to great theological confusion. But here we go. Here is what uh, St. John the Cross wrote. I went in, I knew not where, and stayed. So I went in, I knew not where, and stayed, not knowing, but going past the boundaries of knowing. All right now, now this, I, I, the reason I'm not going to read all of this is there's how many uh, par- uh, paragraphs? One or stanzas? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stanzas. If we work through this, it would. It, it would probably take about six episodes because each one of these we have to try to take apart. And what we, what I really want you to do today is I want you to read, I went in, I knew not where, by St. John of the Cross. Now, if, if you are not a part of the Discord channel, just email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. I will send you the link so that you can read it for yourself. And here's what I want you to ask. This is what I want you to ask yourself. Is it theologically sound? Is it theologically correct? Because Our Daily Bread just pointed maybe a million people to this individual, St. John the Cross, who was a Catholic mystic, and to his poem that this person is saying is one of their favorites, and clearly it was there to help them in a great time of confusion and worry. But is it leading it to something doctrinally sound, theologically sound? Is is what's said in, in this writing, is it biblical? Is it theologically sound? This is very important. All right, so so let's go, let's read this again. I went in, I knew not where and stayed, not knowing, but going past the boundaries of knowing. I knew not the place around me, but I came there or how I came there or where from. But seeing where then I found me, I sensed great things and grew dumb, since no words for them would come, lacking all knowledge, but going past the boundaries of knowing. So it's this, it's this idea that they're, they, they're, they're going in somewhere, and, and, and wherever they are, wherever they're going, it, it, it's past the boundaries of knowing. They don't really know. Okay? Trying to think of, of some biblical concepts here. Is this, is this, and I'm just going to throw this out there. Is this possibly connected with the idea of walking by faith and not by sight? As sometimes we follow God when we don't know that sometimes following God leads us past the boundaries of actually knowing because we don't really know. Maybe what we don't know what God is going to do. We don't even necessarily know what God is doing, but we can know well, obviously something. We can know his word. All right. Is that kind of where he's going? Let's see here. The next stanza. Of piety and of peace, I had perfect comprehension. Solitude uh, without surcease showed the straight way whose intention, too secret for me to mention, left me stammering but going past the boundaries of knowing. Right? I'm going to look up this word really, uh, really quick here because I want to know exactly what they're trying to say here. Um, Cessation. All right. So, all right. So of piety and of peace, I had perfect comprehension. 
solitude without cessation, solitude without ceasing is, is he uses another word for that, but that's what he's trying, trying to say. So this, the, so St. John of the Cross saying, okay, piety and peace, he had perfect comprehension. He had solitude without any inter- interruption. Showed the straight way whose intention too secret for me to mention left me stammering, stammering, but going past the boundaries of knowing. So it still seems to be giving this idea that don't really know. There's some things I know, but there's things I don't know, but I kept moving forward. All right. There, there, there's, there's some possible good correlation here with some biblical concepts that continue. So wholly wrapped, so astonished was I for myself divided that my, that my very senses vanished and left me there unprovided without knowledge my spirit guided by learning unlearned and going past the boundaries of knowing. I'll just read the next one. He who reaches that place truly wills himself from self to perish. All he lately knew, seen newly, seems trifles unfit to cherish. His new knowledge grows to flourish so that he lingers there going past the boundaries of knowing. The higher up one is lifted, the less one perceives by sight, the less one perceives by sight how the darkest cloud has drifted to elucidate the night. He who knows the dark all right endures forever by going past the boundaries of knowing. This wisdom wise by unknowing, wields a power so complete that the learned wise men throwing wisdom against it compete. With a force none can defeat, since their wisdom makes no showing past the boundaries of knowing. And then I'm just going to read the next two stanzas. There is virtue so commanding in this high knowledge that wit, human skill, and understanding cannot hope to rival it. And one who knows how to pit against self, his selfless going past the boundaries of knowing. And if you should care to learn what this mode of being wise is, it is yearning that discern the divine and all it guises, whose merciful gift and prize is to confound all knowledge going past the boundaries of knowing. All right. Now, I apologize if I try, if, since I have not read the poem, like, you know, I think the first time I've read this was, uh, this first time I've read it in probably 15 or 20 years. So just trying to know exactly where to pause and how to break that down perfectly. I apologize. Reading poetry requires a, a certain skill that clearly I did not possess in that reading. I apologize because my mind was trying to process it. I was so busy trying to process it m- more than just trying to read it perfectly. But please read it for yourself. So here's the question. What this seems to be saying is that in one spiritual journey, now remember this is coming from a Catholic mystic perspective, that you have to reach a level where you go beyond knowing and you still follow, you still trust, that there's a, there's a, there's a wisdom that one can gain when you go p- past the bonds of knowing. There, there's, there's, you have to reach this level where you're functioning as a Christian that goes beyond the knowing. Now, that's, that's very, dare I say, it's, it's, it's very subjective. It seems very theoretical. It's very mystic. Hey, hey, you're, you're in this situation. You just got to go beyond knowing. You're going to get to your place where you're beyond knowing. What, what exactly does that look like? What does that even actually look like? I, I, I don't know. So here's, here's the question I would ask you. So someone is in a situation where they're confused. They're baffled. They, they don't know what to do. They don't understand. Husband's been furloughed. What are they going to do for money? What are they going to, how are they going to pay the rent? And they and they just, at a, a, a time of utter confusion. What would be, just, I'm just going to ask you this, theologically, what would be the best advice? All right, 
You just follow God and go beyond the bonds of knowing. You don't know. You just follow God. You don't know. Or from a theological perspective, would the advice be, you know what? There are things you do not know. There's things you are not given any information about. God doesn't always tell you everything that's going to happen. You don't know. You can try to focus on not knowing and be preoccupied with the not knowing. Or what you can do is turn away from what you don't know and grab on to, hold on to what we do know, open up your Bible and cling to every truth that you can know, cling to the knowledge of who God is found in his word, cling to what he does say. He may not tell you the next step, but the Bible does tell you what he, his will is. It does show you what he wants you to do. And he wants you to do that in spite of not knowing. Should we Find some way of just embracing the not knowing, or should we face the not knowing with what we can know, which is written in the word of God? Now, the the program is offering, now they they do try to bring in some scripture. I think they bring in uh, 2 Corinthians, but I'm just thinking theoretically, should we not turn to what we do know? Hey, I don't understand, God, what's going on here, but here's what I do. I can open I can open up the Bible, and I know this, that the Bible is the inspired word of God that is profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. I do know this, that, that Jesus Christ is the word that is the eternal word that was with God and was God and became flesh. I do know this, that Jesus Christ died to save me from my sin. I do know that that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Like I can start, I can confront the unknown with what is known found in his word. What is the best way to confront the unknown? Embracing the unknown or, or carrying into the unknown what can be known because it's right there in his infallible word. Isn't the sword, God's word, the best thing to take into the battle with the unknown? Now, I, please, I'm not saying God's word tells you what every little detail. It doesn't. But it gives us those eternal things that we need to know. What do you think is the best theological approach to the unknown? Now, you, you can read the poem and maybe you're interpreting it differently. I would, I would, I would challenge you to read it and let me know. St. John of the Cross or John of the Cross. 16th century counter-Reformation reformer who was a Catholic priest and mystic. And that's the person and his poem was what was pointed to this morning on evangelical Christian radio. In fact, Redeemer Broadcasting is definitely much more reformed Christian radio, which is just interesting. Now, I know the, the station, they have a reform perspective and they, they air certain programs that obviously are not reformed. Daily Bread is clearly not reformed. It's just, why would, it's just our Daily Bread to me, it would not have taken much to say, sing, sing, I turned to one of my favorite poems from the 16th century Catholic counter reformer that would have given everyone at least a historical perspective of who he was. But they didn't, they left all of that out, which can lead to confusion and misunderstanding. So then someone goes, looks up that poem and probably trying to figure out what in the world is St. John of the Cross saying. He's looking at things from a Catholic mystic perspective. And you can ask yourself, is that good advice or bad advice? What, what do you think the best advice is when someone's like, man, I don't know what's going on. My husband just lost his job. My kids are sick. The car just broke down. The air conditioning unit just blew up. We don't have any money. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where we're going to get our next meal. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to pay the rent. I don't know what's going to, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Well, you know what? Just follow God beyond the knowing. Just embrace the not knowing or go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I, I don't have any clue how you're even functioning right now. I am so sorry what you're going through. First and foremost, as a church, we're going to see what we can do and help you. We're going to make sure that you have your basic necessities and we see what we can do to help you with an air conditioning unit or whatever. Because obviously sometimes the church will just say, I will pray for you. No, you got to step up and do something. Okay, so yeah, you do that. But then you say, here's what we do know, that the Bible is God's word. Let's focus on what we can know in that and embrace what we do know as we walk together through the unknown.
That to me sounds more like theological advice, but you can tell me what you think. You can tell me you agree or disagree. You can email me newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. And um, well, you can go listen to our daily bread, listen to the whole thing, um, because they do go to 2 Corinthians 4. In fact, let me, let, let's just be fair. Let me be fair here because I, I want to make sure. Um, I'm going to just type in our daily bread. Give me one second. Our daily bread. Here is the devotional. All right, it's opening. Give me one second. And uh, where? Oh, well, that did not bring up the devotional. Oh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, okay. I got a 10 day Easter reading plan. Okay, where's the devotional? Oh, here's it. Here it is. Past the boundaries of knowing. Okay. So this is what they, they, the scripture they give us. 2 Corinthians 4.18. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since that is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Well, I agree. We do focus our eyes on the eternal, but we, but that doesn't mean we, we, we focus on the unknown. We focus on what is what is known that is eternal. God is eternal. His word is eternal. Heaven and earth will fade away, but the word of God will abide forever. So I, I don't know if that quite fits the, the poem, but you, you can read it for yourself or you can listen to it, Our Daily Bread, and you can read or listen to the devotional. And, or you can subscribe to Our Daily Bread podcast wherever you get your podcast. I would challenge you to do so. Just if they ever mention a name of someone, you may want to look up who they are. And you may want to know a little bit of church history. So if someone says, hey, I was reading this reformer, John of the Cross or St. John of the Cross, you can be like, okay, you do know that that's a Catholic counter-Reformation reformer, right? Who was a priest and a mystic, right? You do know that, right? So there you go. All right. I think the test went well. I'm going to look at something really quick. Yeah, I don't think we lost connection in any way, shape, or form. So... All right, those in the Discord channel, please give me your interpretation of the poem, 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 poem. I can't even say the word right this morning. I mean, I haven't slept, right? So give me a little bit of break. Um, but I, I would love to get your thoughts. We still are, I'm still trying to process the things we did yesterday afternoon. I know it probably didn't seem important, but I still think we were, I think we're just on the verge of some kind of big, important concept here. I mean, we, we looked at this whole smart smartphone accountability program and then what the, the, the how do people come into play in developing practical godliness? Yeah, a lot of issues there. So we'll try to get back to that as well. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you. Have a great day. And uh, well, uh, email me, newsif at yahoo.com. And uh, well, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do the rest of the day. I don't know. I don't know how many other broadcasts we'll do today, but we will see. All right, everyone have a great day. God bless.